to the Sage and Zunk, streaming Total Warhammer 2. Hi, Zunk. Hi, Sage. Hi, gang. Oh, I'm so excited about Total Warhammer. Yeah, yeah, it is quite awesome. <clears throat> hey there, guys, and welcome, Sheepy. So, um, I played this game quite a bit this morning and afternoon, and I am kind of sure that we're worse off than we were when I started this morning. So that's kind of bad. Anyway, hi everyone. To those of you who don't know, <clears throat> uh, Zunk is uh, my co-caster for tonight, which I appreciate tremendously. Um, he usually streams with Andy. I believe Andy's on vacation, is that right? Uh, Andy's very thoughtfully taken uh, the love of his life for a romantic weekend in Bergen, and he may or may not have mentioned to her that he'd be spending three of those days playing in the tabletop tournament. <laughs> <laughs> that is uh, <clears throat> that is very romantic. Tabletop tournaments are the best place to uh, to have some adventures. It's, it's very optimistic, is what it is. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I can just picture the look on her face. <clears throat> All right. So, yes, excellent, excellent stuff. So, yeah, um, quick recap. We uh, were doing quite all right. I had a um, reasonable income. I made some pretty serious mistakes. Um, have you caught up on uh, today's stream yet, Zunk? I'm at the end of episode two, where we oh. met the, uh, the pirates down south. We'd... Um, fought off the Norse over on the uh, the east part of the peninsula and you just had a look at the Skaven that I see you've actually conquered over to the west. Well, I've conquered them over to the west a bit, that is true, but the Skaven up north, which I believe are the same dudes, have dealt a crushing, crushing blow because the game kept telling me, you know, that there's such a thing as heroes. Did you know that heroes can do stuff other guys can't? Heroes are kind of important. And I was like, yeah, I'll get to that. I'll get to that. And then all of a sudden, a Skaven hero walked into my capital and nuked it. That kind of sucked. Because I used to have this building here, the Holy Ziggurat, which was a level 3 main capital building. Which also allowed the construction of a level 3 gold mine and a level 3... Um... <clears throat> great uh, uh, connection web thingy and it blew up this Which would be one of the new uh, Skaven engineer heroes isn't it that can do earthquakes I think. that was an earthquake yes and it dealt a crushing blow to my economy I think I went from plus 1200 netto per month to plus 20 wow that hurt <clears throat> and what's, immediately um, after, yeah, go ahead. What's the uh, lead time before uh, Hex Hotel grows back to a, a tier three capital? I could buy the tier three right now. I have the population for it. However, I have three hundred and fifty-three gold coins, and I'm losing nineteen every month right now. Right. Okay. Well. Two, two solutions, I guess. Have you got a plan? Uh, well, I was in... Uh, I, the disaster hadn't quite ended, because right after that engineer blew up my capital, he also conquered the city Ziggurat of Dawn, which used to be mine and is now his. Oh, and then the Skeggy decided to rebel, because why not? Uh, well, it's all kicking off, isn't it? Yeah! Yeah, so we're doing we're doing quite awesomely. The good news is we don't have any threats on the south anymore. We have a non-aggression pact with both the um, new colonists dudes and the orcs because well, uh, they asked for it and they were willing to pay for it, and I was kind of short on cash. I've I've basically had a lot of people. I I run a protection racket as lizardmen, basically. Mm -hmm. So, given that priority one is to get the city back to tier three, but you're losing money, um, yeah. the two ways I can think of doing this is either 
go and sack an enemy settlement. That's Ooh. the plan. Sell some soldiers, which is a real rough step backwards. Yeah, the thing is, I didn't really need to have two leaders, uh, but I had no idea what I was doing. I had three for a while, which sucked. Um, if I, uh, my, I have a full stack uh, on my general right now, 20 troops, 20 units, which means if I drop my leader um, Kamator here on the east, I would also lose six, uh, five units. Uh, I guess the hero could stay. So that would be bad. Which means uh, sacking a city is definitely the way I was planning to go. Now, Lord Mazdamundi here, with his stack of 20 units, is actually right next to Chotek Causeway, which we're getting to next turn. I like that idea. All right. Uh, I've also... Yeah, make them pay sounds just about right. Uh, I've also placed my first ambush with uh, Kamator, so let's hope that gives us some combat, which might actually gain us some more money as well. Are you f familiar with the, the benefits of the ambush mechanic? Have you seen that before? Uh, nope. Well, yeah, I have actually, but I was on the receiving end of it. <laughs> right. It, it, yeah, it's well worth it. For, for the viewers, what happens when you set up, your opponent is surprised and their army will be in a column as if marching somewhere. And usually you can deploy on both sides of them immediately take out their artillery, immediately go after their archers, and then just basically murder them. Yeah, it was pretty brutal. Let's see. Oh, the Skaven are now offering me to pay me 200 gold to be at peace. I think they're, they see me coming. <laughs> uh, well, well I, I, don't, I don't know how you feel <laughs> about that, but I think that's quite an insult. Yes. I don't think I do it for 2,000. I may be I may be broke, but I have my honor. Well, it's the principle of the thing. Although diplomatically, you are rated strength rank one, but also untrustworthy, which is a bit harsh. Um, if you say so, I have no idea where you got that info from, but <laughs> I'm sure you're right. Um, do, do, do you want to talk about stuff as it crops up, or? Because <laughs> where you got that info from is if you click on the diplomacy scroll. Beware of Sorry, such go on. rogue armies, my lord. They must not be allowed to threaten your realm. Do not tolerate their incursions on your soil. I just met my first rogue army. Desperate outlaws, blah blah blah. They're high elves. Wise indeed. Why can't we be friends? Why can't we? Uh, if you attack a rogue army force, you get 2,000 treasury. Thank you for coming, guys. I really, really appreciate your visit. This is the best thing that could have happened to us. Welcome. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome, indeed. We also discovered someone laying ambush. Uh, Stonehorn tribe. What? He might be a long way away, though. Wow. How did I discover that? <laughs> Good eyesight. Yeah, yeah. Well, I'm I'm a, a slum wizard, you know. We do this thing all the time. Nice. <laughs> so. We can take these out of ambush, I guess. Because we need to deal yeah. with this stuff. You, you want it, you want the Skeggy first because they they are officially at war with you, and if you don't, they'll go and do something violent. Whereas the Hyles over there are just sightseeing and taking photographs of everything. Yeah, true. And they're the Skeggy are well, right next to me, so I agree. But the High Elves come with two thousand gold, and I'm currently earning nine gold per turn. The last. The last time I saw um, the um, tourist type armies, they don't seem to wander around. So you might get away with it, take the skate first, and then immediately going after the uh, Isles. I Maybe. could even send my main stack after them. It's not that Do much further. Yeah. Yeah. Well, yeah, but that would delay hitting Chotek's causeway. I think I'll hit the, uh, the Skeggy first with uh, 
my backup stack. Yes. <clears throat> All right. We are going to fight this fight. Then again, I did also kind of need his help. I, I, I spotted that um, A, you'd clearly played Total War games before. Um, because during the battles, you were wanting to do the right stuff. What was frustrating is, of course, the interface is different and it's trying to get your head around. How do I get them to do what I want? That sounds like a very, very accurate description of what I was running into. Yes, absolutely. Have you mastered it? Or I've, I've improved a little. I know that I can pause with P instead of space. Uh, I, I know that I can group with Control one for instance, and then hit Control g to make sure that they're, they stay in formation instead of taking orders as if they got them individually. So yes. I'm slowly getting there. But that have, took some have you, learning. Have you got the um, move them as a group thing? Do you know you could use the arrow keys to advance them? They just advance really? in the exact formation you set them up in. No, I do know that if you uh, select them and then uh, hit Alt, you can drag them. It's basically the same effect. Um, two different ways to do it, but yeah. Yeah, yeah I mean, you've got it. That's perfect. Alright, uh, I don't see them. They're probably in the forest somewhere. I, I know they have to be somewhere, somewhere over there. Probably off doing Norse things and disgusting in the woods. Attack with caution. Yes. I also really hate how they have this kind of not too obvious blue tick mark on the uh, <clears throat> on the tutorial items. And oh, that does your head in, doesn't it? Because you can't do anything else until you get rid of that. Exactly. Alright, where are you at, guys? I think in the oh. settings you can choose to uh, not tutorial off. Mm, probably Spells might be a good time. Be to increase their potency, my lord. Uh, Dio um, mentions why does the game take a large amount of disk space? It looks pretty simplistic. Actually, if you zoom right in, the the character models are really detailed, Dio. Um, it, it is actually very pretty if you get up close, but we we're kind of looking at a tactical view. Come on, are we playing hide and seek here? What the hell? Uh, oh, little, little skinks look. I think it was something like 40 gigs, uh, Art. Uh, Aardvark, I, I'm not sure. I haven't played Skaven yet. Um, there's definitely Globadiers, um, Warp um, Flamethrowers, and that kind of stuff. So whether there's Rattling Guns, I'm not sure. Well, you can actually save your replays and then make really beautiful cinematic uh, <clears throat> cinematic compilations of them later if you want. And, you know, sometimes in battle you can choose to zoom in uh, in a sensible manner. Alright. Uh, onwards. Go find them. I guess they're oh. probably in the woods here. Where the hell are they? <laughs> Be sure to use the maps available to assist your tactical planning. Do you know what? I think they're doing an Andy. They're just being late. <laughs> Come on, Norse. We, we, we said half past seven. Where are you? Yeah, this isn't quite what I had in mind for this fight. I guess if I don't win it in an hour, they win, right? Because I'm attacking? That's the thing. I, I don't know. I've never seen this before. It's normally <laughs> reasonably evident where they are. <laughs> I wonder if it's a bug. That would be funny. Right. I've not seen this. This is new. Oh, by the way, if you're fighting in trees, um, you can turn the foliage off. Um, I don't know if you need that, which helps a bit. Right. Um, well, only if I can actually see what's underneath. <laughs> as long as they're hiding. <laughs> I don't... Oh, it, it won't reveal the hiding Norse. But I know, yeah. Units, but, uh, 
well, the, I guess there must be somewhere off to the northwest because we're about at the edge of the map now. Yeah, yeah. Well, let's get back information, I guess. Uh, <laughs> d d d d not, not exactly, Dio, because although you can visually turn the foliage off, um, your you and your opponent still get the full benefit that trees offer. So, for example, large large creatures have penalties for fighting in trees. If you're firing missiles in the trees, um, they miss a lot more because thematically a bunch of them in the uh, wood. I'm still getting the hang of this dragging the right way around. <sighs> Is that holding the right right mouse button down to rotate? Is that yes. Right, got you, yeah. <laughs> Which always seems kind of, often seems kind of counterintuitive. Wow. Uh, Dio, uh, yeah, funny you should mention that. Tree men are large creatures, but also tree men as the part of wood elves. I don't think. Oh, oh there they are! There much. they are! Go, go, oh, go, hello. go, go! Enemy sighted. Yes, I found them finally. Uh, they picked the higher ground. That kind of makes sense, doesn't it? For all we know, we've just been encircling each other. They've been going <laughs> counterclockwise and so forth. But I wasn't hiding. Well, it, it just makes sure you win the battle because whoever wins gets to write the history, you know. So. Mm -hmm. True, true. So everyone's going to be super tired by the time we start fighting. <laughs> so what, what have we got? We've got three Saurus with shields. Oops. Um, we've got Saurus Lord, is that? And is that a Stegodon? Um, we have uh, uh, one uh, Saurus Lord, one Saurus, uh, one Skink Priest, hero, uh, two Spears with shields, and three uh, Mace with shields. Also, it appears our enemy <laughs> is hiding again. <laughs> The, the, the top of that hill off to the west, I'm, I'm calling it now. I hope so, because that's where I'm going. To be fair, I actually tried to do something similar to them last time. I hid all my guys in the woods, and I wanted them to come to me, because they'd be tired by then. And so I had my general walk out of the woods and run in circles, but they didn't take the bait. I was kind of sad about that. <laughs> yes! Yes! Normally, this isn't a feature of Total War, Commander. that you don't have a problem going, well, where are they? This is right. definitely something new. Here we go. Finally, we get to do stuff. Right, you go and protect these guys. These guys look like they need some help. You go attack something. You also help them out a little. Well, I think we're doing quite alright, aren't we? These mostly marauders he's got. Yeah, yeah and I, I beat them up. Uh, in the last stream this morning. Yeah, don't go chasing the <sighs> missile cavalry. That's an awful idea. Go chasing, ch chase the other missile cavalry instead. Okay, that doesn't work either. Unless, unless we manage to actually get the pincer thing right this time. Our hero is coming up behind them. There! Got him! These things are a nightmare, the broad of course. A, a good counter to them, um, which we don't have available to us in this battle, but a good counter to them is um, uh, archers, longbows, yeah. or any other ranged weapon, because they've got or, very short range. Or melee cavalry of your own, of course. Well, the problem is that they're, they're, they're very fast. So if you've got, for example, heavy cavalry, you can't catch them. Yeah. They just continue riding away and throwing spears at yeah. you. But if you have more troops than they do, such as I do now, then you can still pincer them. 
Yes. Which oh, yeah, yeah. They're, they're just annoying, you know. Oh. But that takes a lot of clicking. Especially when you've got two at once. The enemy is slain, oh. my lord. I may have Send killed their general. With his dying Send his army after him. Of course, what you could do is rely on your super tough sauruses and their shields to just basically make them run out of ammunition, which we've done. All right. Yeah, yeah, we seem to have managed that at least. Hurrah! Yay! Well, that went fast, didn't it, YouTube? <clears throat> All right. So. I wondered why in the YouTube you were editing bits. This, this possibly part of it. Wow, twelve hundred. Well, well, that was helpful. Um, do we want four hundred gold in addition to that? I believe we do, because they're gonna die anyway, right? We will probably get a second bite of the cherry that, in, um, though you have killed the lord. So they yeah. might get a, a substitute lord and take a few paces away and you chase him and beat them again. Alright. Enemy killed in battle. Excellent. Ah, I expected that because their lord died they would be gone, but you're right. No, the, 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 the mechanic for totally gone is if you're attacking a city and you win, they're gone because they have nowhere to run. Or if you have an underway interception, you know how the dwarves and orcs and gave them to the underway. Um, if a battle happens there, whoever loses is gone, gone. But, but apart from that, they will always have um, a, a little bit of a retreat with whoever didn't mm -hmm. die on the field. This is why, if it's a battle that's uh, in an open field, um, it's sometimes worth not clicking in battle straight away. But if they've right. got a lord or artillery unit, hunt them down and kill them dead so they don't have to fight them again. Yeah, that makes a lot of sense. All right, and I can't actually attack him again on the same turn. Is that a thing? It might be because we used most of our movement to get there in the first place. Oh, but right. he won't. I don't think he'll be able to move very far because you've got to like a. Do you see that red zone of influence? Mm -hmm. I don't I know. think he can go past you. I think he's trapped. I think. That looks don't, like it. Don't yeah. quote me though. I, I might be wrong. <laughs> So would you recommend um, heading for Chotex Causeway first, or would you recommend going to pay the High Elves a visit next turn? I think Causeway Given that first. we probably want to kill the High Elves, um, what, what, what we can do is if you click the Diplomacy tab, as you can see what relation did the High Elves hold us in, I think. Um, they might be a, a, a unit that you can see whether they're hostile well, towards us. But they're a rogue army. Do they appear in these tabs? I they do, and their relation is condemning my great power, minus five. They've got to go. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> yes. All right. Well, I think we can do the Chotex Causeway first. High elves invade your realm, my lord. They must be robbed and deprived of their milk money. I'm doing... So basically what's happening here, folks, is you've got some high elves going, excuse me, could you tell me which way to the... Oh my god, they're going to kill us all! Hmm, I wonder if I can improve the audio quality, because Discord's slightly breaking up. It might be me not pressing push to talk religious, religious, uh, religiously enough, is that any better? Uh, it sounds more like glitching due to CPU stuff. So I'm just going to go see. Um, <clears throat> go to details. Set priority above normal. Huh. Uh, Ardvark is, yeah, he's absolutely right. It is free XP if you change people and kill them. And you, you get more money, you get more XP. Um, it's so win it's all around. <laughs> So it's worth uh, playing out the uh, hunt them down and kill them all bit. Oh yeah, always. And th there's an, there's another thing that is also um, something to be aware of, um, is when you attack a city, if you're not super bothered about building it up afterwards, um, if it gives you a lot of money to do so, it can be worth sacking it and then coming back the following turn to then capture it. And you, if you're a little bit light on cash and not too worried about the state of which your new city will be in. Right, so you sack it, then, then you don't actually conquer it, 
that turn. Correct. Then you get and money, then on the and then... following turn, then you conquer it. All right. That sounds sensible. Um, this looks like a battle that will take a long time, even though I actually dominate. Hmm. If, if it, the, the way the way I tend to judge these, looking at other st uh, other folks who've been YouTubing this, is if the battle's not particularly interesting, or it might be a load of faff, just don't resolve it if you want. Hmm. I think it'll take it'll take forever because it's a lot of troops, and I do actually dominate it right now. Yeah. Looking at the balance of power thingy, which I guess represents. Strength of troop types. I'll bet these are a lot of slaves. <clears throat> game is struggling though. That is kind of sad because this is a fairly new game PC. The stream has just gone black for me. Now it might just be for me, so I'll refresh ah, it. I had this once before. Yeah. I had this once before, and actually, the stream would stop uh, streaming as well, even though everything was still running. We're back! My apologies for the brief interruption, guys. <clears throat> Technical hitch, but we are returned. So yeah, let's auto-resolve this one. Decisive victory! Ooh, awesome. Oh, Fantastic leadership, my lord. Thank you, thank you. I I'm pretty sure I could have um, could have lost more troops if I tried them myself. The only time when that sometimes bites you on the arse is if you've just fought a battle and you won, but some of your key troops are on really low health. If you want to resolve it, even though you win the battle hands down. Either sometimes wipe out a unit, which uh, has happened mm -hmm. to me more than once. And I thought, oh God, why did they to resolve that? And that could be very fairly costly. So I've actually got four thousand gold now, which is quite decent. So that means I can do the upgrade even if I don't sack the city. Hmm. Well, also oh. two thousand six hundred isn't the king's ransom, so it's. it's it's kind of, do you want to, it's a bit on the fence there. Because some, sometimes if you've got a very large, developed city, they tend to give you more money for sacking them. It's unfortunate for how big it was in the first place. So the loot and occupy might be a nice middle ground. Um, do you want to keep the city and not have rebellions? Um, loot, loot and occupy is okay, but it does accelerate the likelihood of them rebelling. But if, as long as you've got an army on hand to crush the rebellion, Go ahead. Yeah, well, I'm, I've kind of have need of my armies. We could just occupy. There's like, I mean, the main thing is that you've got enough cash to repair the capital. So, yeah, exactly. <clears throat> and no artvok. I'm not saying that four thousand is a lot, but considering I had three hundred gold and a plus nine at the start of this turn, going to four thousand and slowly, slowly getting to recuperate our economy is helpful. A lot of the um, relative merits of sacking are not also hinges on um, what you've got in your army. That if your lord or one of your heroes has got um, skill points put into more post battle loot or more sacking loot, mm -hmm. you get more money for these activities as well. We get to research something. Do we have enough cash to repair the damaged buildings in Hexacodal? Mm, this would be 280, this would be 420. But I heard that they also repair themselves automatically over time? For free? Do you know I didn't know that? Well, should, should we leave them and see how quickly it takes them to fix themselves? Right. I Does didn't know that, something? so you taught me something. Well, I, I was just told this by someone watching. Does it say somewhere how broken it is, or how much less it works? I think that green bar is the indicator, so these are about 60% functional, I think. Mm. Well, it would be a lot easier to test it next turn if we have a number for that. <laughs> yeah, doesn't say. Well, um, 
I guess the only measure we've got is they want 280 to fix it. So if they want 140 to fix it next turn, we presume that they've prepared half the damage. Maybe. Yeah. Sounds about right. So more it's leadership. It's a learning curve, isn't it? Yeah. It is. It curve. is. More weapon strength for Saurus specifically. Now currently I'm using a lot of Saurus, so that would be pretty immediate benefit. Oh, Artvox saying they either work or they don't, and the bar is how close to being fixed they are. Alright, alright, that's interesting. I think I'll go for the weapon crafting. This is this is one area that I'm gonna struggle to be of much um, assistance because these tech trees are all brand new, so the relative merits of what I don't I know as much as you. Uh, apparently, we can build stuff in the Monolith of Fallen Gods, and this is something that improves my income in other buildings in the same province, which includes my capital. That seems like a good thing to have. Did you um, get completely um, comfortable with how the buildings across three and three and four cities in a province synergize? So I know that your uh, capital has a higher limit on the tech tree. Yes. So that you should build the kinds of buildings that tend to benefit from having higher uh, slots options yes I agree and that some buildings give a bonus based on the province like this lodestone here uh, relative to the stone marker uh, adds another five percent to the province uh, building income which means getting this in your uh, small town is actually really good because it improves my capital's income right that's true so for example if you've got your basic um, um, army recruitment building that is a potentially a, a, a three-tier arrangement. You definitely don't want it in your capital because you can have a fully up, max upgraded one in one of your minor towns and you save the capital exactly as you say for those buildings that require tier four or five to get the most out of them. Yeah, I learned that the hard way. Well, it, it's not it's not madness, by the way, that some, some folks, when you start off, because you need it right away they might start building a barracks and then remove it because when you trash a building you do get some of the money back so it's it's not a complete disaster you do need to chop and change later mm -hmm. so a little right. bit of time obviously um the, the other thing to note um also is that military buildings so for example uh, cavalry stables you only need one and having more does you no good whatsoever. And normally the game will prompt you about having a little yellow exclamation mark warning you that if you build it, you've already got one. However, buildings that are financial, like treasure rooms or growth-based things, um, they do stack. All right. And when you say you only need one, that is per province or in total? Well, Kind of one per province um, will let you build that unit in that province and you can just leave it at that if you build a, a, a duplicate in a, a second province the only advantage you're getting is just geographically you can now make that in two different places yes exactly but you'd rather the thing is because you cannot send troops somewhere without having a uh, lord present it's not like you can say, okay, I'll spawn my units in specialized location X and then automatically send them forwards to my lord at the front because you need a lord to actually get them back and forth. That's quite right. And there's there's two, well, there's, I guess there's three ways around that. One is that your main lords regularly make trips back to pick up new units, which is a pain. Mm -hmm. um, Two is that you duplicate those buildings uh, in further flung provinces, which you can do. Um, or three is that you have a lord who's like a shuttle, that all he does, you, you skill him for cheaper recruitment mm -hmm. units. He recruits them all, walks up to where the main guys are, and they swap. Because you, you can right. exchange unit between lords. 
and you can take the marching uh, stance and uh, the the speeding up your moving across the map and just have him shepherd them. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. I think that works better for bigger empires, but it might actually be worthwhile. Let's see if the high elves want to move. I'm going to go with... <gasps> oh, they're going oh, to oh, 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 stay oh, there. Oh, oh, that's, yeah, that was to be expected. Why Have can't I retreat? Because my, um, my secondary leader is being attacked by the Skaven, because I ran after the Skaven. It's, a, it's an ambush, unfortunately. He, he's got a, an ambush chance, and Skaven have got a stance. Uh, mm -hmm. A little bit like the Beastmen did, that they can attack in ambush. So, unfortunately, uh, we're stuffed. Okay, because we're losing this for sure. I didn't realize I was getting ambushed. I figured that would happen on my turn. To be honest, I hadn't... T I hadn't clocked that Skaven had got this, but... Um, it, this is the same mechanic as the Beastmen used in Warhammer 1. So... So, we can't run. I remember that. I tried that last time. Let's just... Oh, what? <laughs> oh, that's a result. <laughs> uh. Um, well, Kamator. Legend. Well done, Sunshine. Uh, now, run! Run away! <laughs> that went quite okay. I wasn't expecting that. That was a bonus. Well done. Me neither. This is like one of those 6 plus 5 plus plays that you go, Oh, I could just do this. Yeah, sometimes you've just got to roll a hard 6. Fantastic. I mean, so, we took a real beating. We lost three units there, but you well, know. that saves me on the upkeep. <laughs> yep, yep, yep. I think we're going to go ahead and eat some uh, some rats tonight because <clears throat> we can use some hit points there. That was unexpected. This might actually be a great time to send my main stack after them, if I can. Wow. Wow. So did he, oh, no, he no. attacked you with both those stacks, didn't he? No, one of them was the uh, the Skeggy sk stack that I had just uh, ran af run after. Yeah, but it was... Uh, are they allied the to each other, the, sk the Skaven and the, the Skeggy? No, you fight I, both I think armies. This was, the undermining of your rule I think this was Skaven. just the, uh, the Skeggy. Oh, sorry, just the Skaven. Right, lies. yeah. Among your Win the following battle. Sunburst standard of Hexwattle. All right. So bonus XP. Blah, 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 blah. By winning what battle exactly? Uh, if you click on where you're hovering over right now, where it says Sunburst standard of mm -hmm. Hexacotal towards the top, you normally will get a. Um, a, a, like an hourglass that will zoom in on where it is. Yeah, there you go. So you can either pay money and it'll just teleport you to the battle. I think it's a 500 or a 1,000. Or you can walk into that square. I'd, I'd suggest at the moment we need to try and help our eastern army out a bit first. Yeah. That, that, that'll, that'll keep for a couple of turns. Yeah, first we'll head out towards the high elves. And... Uh... Try and fix this mess. So yeah, we have we have like a couple of troops left. It's not a lot. We also don't have the reach to retreat to Skeggy. Huh. Oh boy. Uh, if we change to March stance, can we reach? Ooh, that's a good one. Thank you. Thank you. March. Yeah. Uh, now we can reach Skeggy. We can even reach Monolith of the Fallen Gods. Do we prefer that? And if so, why? Probably Skeggy, as it has walls, and Monolith of the Fallen Gods does not. Yeah, um, you can tell. Oh, you see, so there's crenellations on the beige border of the the title. Uh, ah, right over here. Yes, I see it. Yeah, you see what I mean. So they're 
probably, if he's going to attack one of them, Skeggy is the one that would be harder to take. I, I've got an awful fear that they might give us a problem, because those garrisons in both of those will be small, but Skeggy's the better of the two. On the other hand, if I hide... Yeah, so if I hide in a place that doesn't have walls, they'll take it instantly. But if I hide in a place that has walls, I might bring my main stack to back up. Yeah. Could be. It, it's a gamble, but could be. Alright. Sounds like a plan. Uh, let's have a look at our hypothesis on the... So the repair cost didn't change, but the bars are more filled up, which means basically you pay all of it, and you don't pay partially if you wait a while. But if you wait long enough, they do get completely restored. That's fair enough. The only drawback then I can see is that it's just stopping us upgrading to tier three, which we're probably not in a hurry to do anyway, so we could just leave it. According to the description, they only partially work if you don't uh, restore them. My, well, my understanding was yeah. that if it's, say, a money building and it's half damaged, you only get half the benefit, but I'm, I'm not 100% that. Or well, I definitely can tell you, if, if the walls are damaged, you will have holes in the walls should mm -hmm. you be attacked in the siege. Yeah, I remember those from uh, Rome or Medieval or Shogun. Mostly yeah, Medieval. Same. All right. So, I upgraded my first spell thing to have access to the list of spells on my hero. You mentioned there was one spell I should really, really, really look at. Which the one that looked really impressive early on was Wind Blast. And this, this, it's uh, top, uh, sorry, middle line, mm -hmm. uh, three in from the left. Got and there it. are three levels of upgrade, and it's the, 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 I mean, the first one's decent, but the third one is devastating. That the mechanic of the spell, you cast it, and you can, it's got a decent range, and it puts a, like a, a, a cone, um, shaped air of effect where it blasts a load of wind. But the key thing with this is you can put the point of the cone any way you like and then rotate it so you can really aim it to take maximum use and get as many enemies as possible with the wind blast and it's really good um thanks for the advice i will give that a go damage building i know that that was the plan so did we send our huh we can reach this we can reach the high elves in one turn that is perfect. Oh, awesome. Can, can, we can't reach Monolith of the Fallen Gods, can we? Even on a march, that is out of range, I'm guessing. Wait, no, that's not this turn. That's next turn. Oh, um, I, was, I was just thinking of the Monolith of the Fallen Gods as a, as a possible victim of the Skaven army that's just off to the east. Can so they take it f instead of me? It's not just my quest to go there, it's actually an item and they could take it instead. Sorry, I'm talking at cross purposes. <laughs> mm -hmm. The um, I'm, I'm talking about the uh, the city oh, off right. to the east. The, the, you know the undefended one that we didn't mm -hmm. go to with the, the wounded army? No, yeah. that quest battle stays there forever until you get round to it. Yeah. Nobody else can interfere with it. Yeah, so you're saying if I do my march this turn, I might actually be in reach of Monolith next turn. Instead of because I'm not, well, I'm not attacking the High Elves this turn anyway. So you don't have to, they're, they're not at war with you. So if you, if you switch to March Stance now, but don't actually move, it will show you how far you can yeah. get. Um, also, a worthy point to note, and it probably won't, no, it doesn't matter really here. I, I'd March Stance towards Monolith of the Fallen Gods yeah. now, because he, he, he's going to try and take it. If, exactly. you couldn't, if you couldn't reach it, but as long as you could get to touch the red circle around it, if he attacked it, you would mm -hmm. assist with your big army in the defense. Yeah. So that's very important to know. But no. There's there's a bit of a gap still. Alas. The, the, the threat is real that we do need to defend that, because if he, even if he doesn't attack us this turn, the, the other thing his army might do is sit and recuperate, because at the moment they're very battered. Mm -hmm. Yeah, no, I'm planning to take him down if I can. Absolutely. Yeah, yeah. I like that. That's that's a what you've done there. I think that's about Bob on best we can manage. All right, these guys already moved. So can they still? 
recruits? Do we want to recruit? Because this is uh, we, quite we the can't useless. we can't because both our armies are in march stance, so you cannot. Oh, absolutely! Yeah, I I knew that. So this one will say you can't. Yes. All right, that's our turn done. Then let's see what the Skaven do. Hmm. Well, I'm glad that our economy is uh, somewhat picking up again. I think you saved this. This was a real precarious position when we started, and I think you turned turned this around. Mate. <laughs> I think these are the guys who broke their non-aggression pact with me earlier, and now they want it back. Well, last time, you guys paid for it, and now you can do so again. They're probably not doing this. Well, let's see if they'll do it for less. Pay 500. Oh, hold on. Have we got a trade agreement with them? Because we, if it looks like we do, we've no, got a trade can't. agreement and a non aggression pact already. No. No, they're asking for a non aggression pact, and I think you need to have a non aggression pact before you can even have a trade agreement. Isn't that the case? Um, no. Non-aggression pact's the easiest one to get. It's the one that, the, that most racers, if they're on the fence, will accept first. I don't know if it's... You must have one in place before you can trade. I don't know, actually. I've never tried yeah. that. But no, the ones that you see on my list are with a uh, different race. We don't have... Sorry, my, these. my bad. Yes, you're right. It's, it, it's slightly smaller than usual, so I'm peering at the screen going, what am I looking at? As these are also lizards, and there's a fighting chance we could get on with them, do you want to conquer them at some stage? Because if you do, then being uh, giving them the cold shoulder is the right thing to do. If you get all pally pally and then go and attack them, you will. Um, do you see on the left hand side of the screen now where it says strength rank three, mm -hmm. trustworthy? I'll be considered if a traitor, and everyone will hate me. Yeah, I get well, that. Well, you, you, you'll get things like devious or untrustworthy or, or, you know, that kind of thing, and it will make future negotiations harder. Yeah. So my uh, my idea here is um, that everyone to the south... I've, I've already got uh, non-aggression pacts with the, uh, the pirates there, or uh, the colonists, and there's a bunch of lizards there that I had non-aggression pacts with. So I figured, that's fine. Um, I'm safe to the south. And then I'll uh, I'll go and conquer the north, where there's Skaven and Dark Elves, who I don't like anyway. Yeah, and nice uh, by the time I've got the north uh, sorted, I can revisit those trade agreements and uh, non-aggression pacts and stuff. That was the idea. Yeah, I thought that, that sounds a good plan. All right, all right. Um, Skaven are now offering me 1,800 gold in order not to kill them. You know what you can do with that goal? Well, how much Ooh. do we trust the rats? Look at this! <laughs> Never mind, look at what's happening now! This is so good! <clears throat> he decided to try and sneak under me in a tunnel. And I caught him with my main stack. Boy, that was a bad move by the rat, wasn't it? Dear yeah. Toxie, you silly, silly rat. It's also there their country's leader. I well. think this faction is... Uh... Oh, it, is this a rebel faction? So he's, he's weak as weak anyway, so this will wipe them out, I think. Yeah, I'm going to go ahead and make sure I kill him. Because this is the guy who sent the uh, suicide bombing nuke that destroyed my economy. I want his head on a plate. It's like some of my some of my finest videos are where I lose awfully. Uh, Anarians, uh, Anarians asking, "What's your specs?" Well, they're 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 black square rimmed, as far as I can see. <laughs> Smartly R two. Very astute, very astute. I love it. Um, if you uh, would like to have a look at my specs, on my Twitch panel below is actually a link to my machine. All right, so we have quite a bunch of troops. Let's say that we take all of our default infantry. That's these guys. And label them one. And then line them up. I'm not even going to bother with strict, sensible lineups because that would take forever. 
Uh, leader dude can be somewhere in the center over here. The cannon can go up front because it's actually a tank. That took me so long to wrap my head around that, that my artillery is good to put in melee. Oh, now, with with that, I think it's a similar unit to the Empire Steam Tank in Warhammer 1, where you've got two modes, where mode 1 is it'll fire like a, a cannon on the front, but mode 2 is it's reasonable in melee. Yeah. Um, what, are, what, what, it's, what are its stats like? I'll have a look for you in just a second. Thank you very much. Here we go. It's got armored, armor-piercing melee. It causes terror, and it has the beam of Chotek. Uh, 6,000 hit points-ish, uh, 140 armor, 80 leadership, 40 speed, 25 melee attack, 35 melee defense, 250 weapon strength, 34 charge bonus, 18 ammo, 240 range, and 448 missile damage. Right, well, what I'd, I'd gain from that is it's primarily offensively used as uh, artillery. However, 140 is an absolute ton of armor. So it is quite resilient, so if it gets surrounded, it's not the end of the world. But I primarily use it as an artillery piece, um, and if it's going horribly wrong, its terror and armor will probably save it. But it's not very good at fighting. If you, look at, if you compare it to, say, a Saurus, a unit of Saurus will probably have better melee attack and comparable melee damage. So it's, it's not a ninja toe-to-toe. -to -toe in terms of damage output, but it is very tough. Ah, oh, but it doesn't have to be. It, the, the no, fact no, that it doesn't right, die, yeah. The fact that it doesn't die is just lovely. It's not much of a, a, of a murderer, but it's a decent tank all the same. I wish that if I did, gave these instructions, that they wouldn't just all move there, but that they would actually move information too. So now, for example, I've got my, uh, my skink uh, archers, or javelin throwers, I should say, and they're faster. So they're now running through my formation. I think that's just a little bit silly, maybe. <laughs> yeah. Where's the leader? Um, a, a traditional formation. Um, it depends whether you're going to go to the enemy or they're going to come to you a little bit. Um, but what you can do is line up your um, ranged units in the front, but right behind them, you have your um, fodder spear type units. Mm -hmm. And as and the enemy closes upon you, <laughs> the archers have been firing, but then um, just in time, the spears walk in front of the archers and form up to stop the archers taking the yeah, right. I remember there was something like skirmish mode, which actually let your skirmishers automatically do that. Um, that's unique to skirmish units, um, right. and in the first game, it was a little bit hit and miss that sometimes they wouldn't run away when they should, but it seems to work better in uh, Total Warhammer 2. So we, we, you've got um, a load of skinks here that is setting them to default to skirmish is quite a good idea. Why is my grouping gone and failing to regroup? I had Control-1, now they're grouped. Control-G, now they're locked. And these are control two, control G. That that works. All right. <laughs> Shawnee asks who I'll be cheering for in the uh, Blood Bowl game. Um, Shawnee, it's a tough one. It's a tough one. I'm torn. I shall remain professional and impartial. <coughs> mm -hmm. So we got that. Uh, we're sending him along. And these guys, where are they at? These guys can cover the flanks for now. That's not very flanks, is it? Why is this cannon not shooting? Hold up. So I told it to attack. It's not in melee mode, yet it's walking forward instead of blowing people up. That does not sound like a plan. Halt. Very tired and moving. Yeah, no shit. I want you to shoot this. Not walk. Shoot. Just... why? 
Halt. Shoot. Weird. There we go. Ah, uh, right, okay. If if you've instructed them to walk somewhere, they'll keep going until they get there. Uh, they won't, okay. They won't, I don't think they stop and shoot as soon as something comes in range. That is Whereas if they're standing still... Yeah, yeah, I suppose, yeah. To... All right, all right. Oh, that's good to know. It, it's slightly exacerbated because these are skirmish units. If they were archers, you'd advance them to a certain point, go right there in range, stop. I was mostly yeah. worried about the cannon, actually. Where's their leader, though? Can I... Doesn't the leader have an automatic... Ah, screw it. Just go in melee mode already. Uh, the, the leader is always signified. He's got the same symbol as your guys do. It's like yeah. a kind of a cogwheel. Which isn't there right now. That's why I'm asking. Um, if they don't have a specific general, um, for example, garrisons often don't have a general, they will have a group of infantry that are normally designated yeah. as the leader. But see, no, the I don't is, see them either. The thing is, they have the, the nation's leader. That's the reason I'm doing this battle in... Uh, in actual yeah, to make, fight mode to make, instead of in auto. So it's probably hidden in the woods somewhere, right? Do you know, I'm not sure. I'm surprised we can't see it. Um, it could, it could be that because it's not a traditional army, it's just the, the, the last of a rebel army, uh, you know, an uprising. The, no, this, one of these this, is, is, this is the leader of the Skaven army that, that, the Skaven faction that has been bothering me for ages. Oh, right, sorry, my bad. Yeah, 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 I'm with you now. These are not the Skaven. These are not the rebels you're looking for. <laughs> <laughs> well, look, if, if they get away, you will almost certainly be able to have another go at them and, and then finish them off because they can only uh, run away once. Mm -hmm. uh, KLZD, good evening. Yes, it is. Um, Sage, Andy, and I are in a new paradigm of collaboration and cooperation. So uh, I'm, I'm, uh, I'm playing with Sage tonight because Andy's uh, buggered off and left me. And he's gone on holiday. <laughs> but we'll, we'll be doing these from, uh, from time to time in all sorts of different combinations. So where could they be hiding then? And why am I not catching these guys? The many of the rats have got something called scurry away or something like that. So when they rout, their speed goes through the roof. All right. So that that, 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 that is a feature. It's not a not a coincidence. Filthy rats. All right. Let's speed things up a little. So they can flee the field still, because oh, because this is not an ambush. I remember doing something like this in I, Rome. I think, I think this is, this was an ambush. I think that they don't get to retreat. That if you click end battle now, they are just flat dead. I don't think it was an ambush. I caught them trying to use the underway. I was not in ambush stance. Uh, Which is I also why it, I didn't I get it, to surround them. I think it counts the same, to be honest, mate. I'm, it, right. it did in the first one. I'll, 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 I'll go as far as that. Um, <laughs> Narian, uh, nothing. Good, goodwill and mutual promotion, mate. That, that's basically the deal. He's asking what I would charge. Well, <clears throat> um, I'm, I I'm not certainly, staying up uh... late enough to do this for Narian <laughs> if that's what he's tilting at. <laughs> Let's hunt down, them down like the filthy rats they are. There we go, that's the stuff. Splush. Gone. Just for the scientific purposes, can you let one of them escape just to prove whether we're theoretically right or not that this type of battle doesn't have a retreat, that they're dead dead? Um, no matter several of them have already run off the field, so you're good when it comes to your, uh, <laughs> okay. your scientific curiosity, I believe. And these guys are not running anywhere. These guys are gone. All right, that's the last of that. Do, then. do I do I sense that the lizards are extra motivated in killing this lot because of what happened at the capital city? 
These are the terrorists that nuked my capital. Do you know what? It's when they get radicalized cheese, it all goes to hell, doesn't it? It's terrible. Oh, it looks like you were absolutely right, because underground battles are non-retreatable. Which means I could have auto-resolved this. There well, it was science, left. so, you know, we needed to know, and now we know. We don't really need that much in terms of unit replenishments. Oh, this is... Oh! They, they, they stack! You can put them in the units that need them, it's not 20% of the... Each unit, it's 20% of the total gets added wherever needed. That's kind of cool. I'm a little bit behind. Um... Hang on, so, it up. so what it's done is it is it basically made the the two badly wounded units virtually healed completely. Exactly. Okay. Which is way more than twenty percent of their specific lost numbers. Ah that. yes, no, I did I did know that. It it it's what it is. You you, you see there it says you've deployed one thousand four hundred and thirty five soldiers, each mm -hmm. of whom has got their own notional individual health pool. Yes, you, yeah. you're getting. X percent of that total health pool, yes, yes. That's nice, so you don't have to fix guys that are all semi-wounded, you can just fix those two units that are really busted up. Yeah. Mm, good stuff, good stuff. Uh, 400 gold, XP's, well these are all pretty seasoned units, so they, I have no idea what the XP limits are for how much 100 still is if I've got these kinds of ranks, but I think we're good. Uh, if you look at a character card, I think it tells you um, what XP they've got in, in um, an integer, and then mm -hmm. um, how close they are to the next level. But there's, um, there's seven levels, I, I believe. <clears throat> uh, my load times have been very long, yes. I am probably moving the uh, game to an SSD soon. I have a rod of the storm, which does something. It gives me a spell, four second bombardment, causing magical damage with a small strike area, good against artillery and strong versus multiple combatants. All right. Ah, nice. Now, you know when you've got a caster um, selected during a battle, mm -hmm. that you've got two points of interest in the bottom left corner um, and the bottom right corner. The bottom right corner are his learned um, arcane spells, but also in the bottom left corner um, are abilities that you can trigger, either that they're items or there are special attributes mm -hmm. got. Yeah, so um, that'll appear there. Excellent. So now that I destroyed that unit, though, does that mean we can now conquer? So actually, my uh, <coughs> my war leader, by hiding in Skeggy for a turn, has gotten a a trait for as a uh, as a um, Administrator, basically. Well, it's nice to see he didn't waste his time whilst he was hiding behind the walls of Skeggy and the boss had to come and sort him out, all down all his troubles for him. Speaking of the Skeggy, because I didn't finish them off that turn, they now have 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12. Oh, right, there's a number there. <coughs> they now have 12 troops again. Splendid. Yeah, if left alone, they're going to replenish. Is the is the risk? But you, I, I think the main army will crush them. That they're they're weak yeah. in their constitution of, of what they've got. Uh, Random boy asks, "You sound like a guy who knows about the game. Can I play Warhammer One and Warhammer Two races against each other?" Yes, at you can. Launch, at launch, I think at launch it's not enabled. But Sage is right that ultimately the plan is to not. Uh, what was the phrase? Soon after launch. You can play the mega map, which is yeah. all of Warhammer 1, all of Warhammer 2 on one huge map, provided you own both games. Exactly. So, um, yeah, you can do ma a shared map, and uh, that has all the races you own across the two. Um, exactly. Yeah, I think it's a good time to earn some extra money by killing oh. these high elves. <laughs> there they are. They're, they're just buying T-shirts with Hoax and Total on them, and you know, I I beat into the lizard jungles, and then innocently out of nowhere, 
the lizard army comes thundering upon. Well, they didn't ask whether they could come in. It's still a little bit like sending the SAS against a campus site, though, isn't it? <laughs> Just touching the caravans and stuff. Well, also, once you've opened the tin cans, there's actually pretty decent eating in them. And I got a mission that said I had to do this. That's 2,000 gold. That and the, like a... I, mean, where, I mean, where does it end? If you've got elves wandering around the place willy-nilly, you know, come on. It's the thin end of the wedge, isn't it? Oh, I didn't look what I got. I just clicked it. That was done. So, that was that. And I now have 9,000 gold. Starting to get there. Um, it looks to me like they repair buildings one at a time. Or something. Because the old one monument is now almost fixed. Which is nice. Because it does public order stuff. Uh, but, the skink foraging camp, which improves our uh, growth and replenishment rate, basically food, is still as busted up as it was before. So it's, it's like there's a um, <clears throat> a repair queue, and as soon as the old one monument is finished, they'll start working on the uh, skink foraging camp instead. Okay, that's interesting. So I'm just going to repair that now. <laughs> so then they'll both be done next turn. Who were, who are the guys off to the north? I can see in the distance there with the red banners. Do we have to worry about them at all? Those are dark elves. I are we at war with them officially, or are they still, uh, they just hate us but aren't doing anything about it? I believe we are not yet at war, but we are very unfriendly and deteriorating with both dark elf groups. Yeah. It, I mean, it's inevitable, isn't it? Dark yeah, I was elves, kind of uh, kind of planning on that. If I had to pick someone to fight, then these guys would kind of be... How do I get rid of this view now? Oh, that's fine. So... Ooh, um, another thing I meant to mention to you that you may have subsequently um, figured out is, you know, when you're looking at um, uh, a city... Uh, sorry, a, a t an individual town and looking at uh, what buildings to want to build, there are two ways you can do it. Um, the, the way you had it there, but there's also, um, it, it, beneath that, there are five icons, one of which is the city map. I think it's the middle one of the five, and you get to see the whole um, of the build tree on one page rather than have to look at the four individual trees separately. And I, I, I always found that a bit clearer to get my head around. Uh, this one. Yeah, Again, that's... what I'm looking at is a little bit behind what you've got. But if you click on a city, um, and then the middle of the five icons you've got across the bottom, the right-hand one, for example, is higher heroes, higher lords, and then you've got this one, the city map, I think it is. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so these are the levels. This is what I'm building now. Yeah, I think we got this. Uh, the T-shirt that I'm wearing today... Caff and Diorc, thank you for asking. Thing is, I'm wearing a hoodie, so I actually have to strip, or semi strip, in order to show you. I should really get some t shirt some hoodies from that side. It's my Schrodinger's cat t shirt. There, are you happy? So, yeah. t tell me, Sage, if somebody wanted a t shirt like that, could, could they buy one? Well, if you look at the link that the mods have just put in the. Uh, in the chat, then you'll find that that links you directly to a page where you can buy this t-shirt. And if you do, I get a $5 commission, which is kind of cool. Wow. Yeah. That's great. Hashtag ad. How smooth was that, eh? PewDiePie's not as good as doing his merch as, as that was just there. My <laughs> boom. All right. If someone wanted this exact shirt, could they buy it? Um... I'm I'm kind of repulsed by the question, but I it's not underwear at least. <laughs> Alright. Uh yeah, this is actually pretty helpful, this view. Thank you. Thank you. 
great. Well, I, I, remember, I remember when I was playing Total War the first time, and you had this this format of, of city tree. When you're trying to get your head round, right? I need a, in this province. I need one armory, one stables, one of these, one of those. Oh God, what have I already got? It's real mm -hmm. pain, sort of flitting through them, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. And what what bothers me? What bothers me a lot? <laughs> All right. <clears throat> it's easy for you to say. Remind me to edit that one out. Um, what bothers me a lot is that when I click a city, I assume that city to be on the left. But then, like, I click Monolith of the Fallen Gods, and I go to the bottom view, and I go, okay, this is my city. Wow, I've got all of that. No, that's my capital. The city I just clicked. Because it's a, it's a province view and not a city view. That gets me every yep. time. Yep, 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 yep. Right. So we're chilling here for now. These guys are recuperating. And assigned skill points. Um, I'm not entirely sure how many DLC races there are, Random Boy. I remember when I won the Rebel, <clears throat> I actually got Total Warhammer plus all the DLC that was then available at a price. Which was which was quite quite nice. And then I never played it, which felt so bad. Uh Ooh, I can't get Draftmaster because... Ah, the previous group doesn't include the Root Marcher. It includes only these. Which means we need either either Iron Disciplinarian, which gives me Public Order, or Fervent, which gives me Untainted, or Bonded Service, which lowers recruitment costs. I'm going to go with Public Order because I tend to be in, in cities that have just been conquered quite a bit, and that opens up Draftmaster. For which we have another skill point? That's odd. Well, Maybe is he level ten? I can't quite see on the because um, the, the banners over. He's the top level there. fourteen. Uh, okay, because um, I think I think when you hit level ten, you get two points rather than one, and same with twenty. You know, sort of the anniversary levels. Mm -hmm. But then there's I, I used to play uh, Blood Bowl one with a mod that it, it messed around with the skill points. I think you got two per level, so you had more developed lords. But so did the enemy. So. Mm -hmm. um, when you played Blood Bowl one, you say. Sorry, Warhammer <laughs> one. <laughs> yeah, I, it's memory. a fair mis I I do this too. I was talking about uh, uh, the battle going on on the pitch earlier. It's yeah, it makes perfect sense. You know what it's like, don't you? It's like. Uh, um, my name's not Doreen, it's Jane. It's like, oh, shit. Um, actually, recently I was playing Dungeon Dragons, tabletop, and I was talking about attacks of opportunity when you leave someone's tackle zone. That also uh, makes a lot of sense. <laughs> yeah. Well, they, they kind of get diving tackled, do they? Uh, no, they get a free hit. Yeah, I know. <laughs> Does anyone else ever... Uh, walk outside and they're in a crowd and they start counting how many tackle zones there are like when you're at a bus stop or something is that just me well you've noticed the pavement has clearly conveniently got squares on it you know so <laughs> how far can I reach this to? yeah so lightning strike is the reason we're going into this tree because I've heard it's awesome um, it can be very useful if you're playing against a horde type where there are a um, bunch of armies. What it, what it does is give you the likelihood that you can choose to fight one army rather than all three. Yeah, and s since the stacks are max 20 and um, <clears throat> opponents can have multiple stacks, I think that is worth looking into. It's situationally a lifesaver, but it, it, then huge tracts of time can pass and you never use it. But um, to, to be honest, with all the skills, that there's benefits for all of them, and, and you've got to kind of pick which you want to to go for. Do you want to be a, a spread out or sort of master one and a bit? So, I feel like I should be spending this money. I've got eight thousand left, and it's not doing much right now. Um, good tip, by the way. Do you see at the top right corner, um, you've got uh, a bunch of icons just above the mini-map. Um, mm -hmm. The first one is your quests, but then uh, the middle two, I think, are one, shows you all your armies, so at a glance you can see which ones haven't moved. Uh, mm -hmm. And another one shows you all your cities in a list view, 
and if there are any improvements that you could build, it'll signify that with a little hammer. It saves you having to go around each city one at a time, you know, visually. That's, that's that actually pretty, pretty awesome, yes. That is, I, that is exactly what I always did when playing the previous Total War games, and I've managed to forget about that. So this city, Monolith of the Fallen Gods, has room for something. We can get... An, we're level 3. We're not level 3, so why can we build this then? No, wait, that's... We are level 3. That's the capital I was looking at. Splendid. So we can build level 3 stuff, but we could never upgrade it to level 4. Which would be kind of dumb. Does that mean we can also upgrade this thing? What is this thing? It gives us skinks, so we get better skinks. Whoa! Oh, wow! We go from um, skink skirmishers to croxagores. Wow! If, oh, wait, well, no, that's not true. If you also have the Weapon Crafters Commune, you can then get croxagores. Right now, from, we just get skink chiefs and chameleon skinks. From, from what I've seen, um, improving the Sauruses seems like a fairly high priority thing that croxigors are very good but you only get 12 of them in a group and they're not great as frontline tanks they are shock infantry that mm -hmm. the way you'd most effectively deploy them is you'd have a bunch of standard infantry sources with spears and shields say clogging up the enemy troops and then you charge the croxes in from the side of the back so I could get pterodons, so flying troops, or I could get um, cavalry. Alright, see you Arch. Cheers up. Hmm. Both sound fairly appealing. I, I have no idea how flying troops interact. I mean, I guess if the enemy doesn't have range, they're really, really good. Uh, it depends what they do. Um, mostly they they tend to be quite um, fragile and you use them to go and take out artillery for example um, but they're very susceptible to you know a, a unit of archers will just decimate them um, but then you do get other flyers like um, the, the, the dragons and stuff which are a bit more robust um, they're not they're not as um, like an instant win button um, they are. They, mm -hmm. they, they do tend to be quite uh, brittle. I like to think that nothing is like an instant win button in this game because that would suck. True. Do do you have um, a tree to develop Crox? Uh, sorry, Saurus um, into better Saurus. I think that's somewhere. Uh, that that's the underground lagoon in my capital. I believe, which needs level four, and I'm currently built rebuilding my level three. Right. Okay. So that's a long way off yet. Okay. Yeah, that's a lot of money. Honestly, Sage, I I don't know. I've not played the lizards mm -hmm. yet. I've only seen them in action, and generally, for the previous Total War game, um, getting your um, proper infantry sorted out first is quite good. Yeah, because I love you use that. them a lot. <clears throat> I remember in, in Rome there was I was mostly focused on administrator, which gets you more money but doesn't get you better troops. But then the top administrator building actually had an elite um, uh, infantry squad as well. And because I was focused on administrator, that squad was way better than anything I could get from the military. And that was splendid. Yeah. Right, I'm gonna go for cavalry because I don't have the ability to make any right now, and I feel like I need better cavalry. So it's not a it's not a bad shout because and also I'd expect that to have several types that you'll start off with light cavalry, and then there'll be something big and dangerous at the top of the tree. Um, let's see, it has wait, where is it here? It's I get to build horned ones. Uh, no, not yet. I get to build Cold Wind Riders, which armor shielded, armor piercing, predatory senses, speed 66, and I get to build Cold Wind Spear Riders, same speed, but anti-large. So both melee kind. 
what you typically do is for, for utility um, is you probably take one of each, and the mm -hmm. armor piercers obviously go after the the armored yeah. guys, and <laughs> the ones with anti large go after the big things. Really? Gee, you don't say, Zunk, but it, you know it's well. It's not obvious because what what I did when I first played the the, the, the Total War first game is when oh this particular cavalry type the most expensive therefore I'll buy loads of that and none of the others. Yeah. Which, yeah. then when you came across the thing that you didn't have a counter for, it was like, oh, they're not doing very well against this. Yeah, understanding that you need the right rock, paper, scissor things is definitely sensible. Yeah, a, a balance is, is better than uh, lots of one thing for sure. I'll build this too. So now I've got everything that can build is building. And we're still making money. Uh, and next turn we're going to conquer this. We've got a big benefit once we get Ziggur out of the dawn um, that you get that when you get the whole province. Not only can you issue the command which you'll have seen before, but mm -hmm. it also seems to have um, not obvious benefits to the happiness and general synergy of the, mm -hmm. the whole province. Yes. So getting full sets definitely a thing you want to do. Yeah, I was planning on it. Did you also notice um, that on each of the um, cities, you know, you've got, say, Skeggy, that on the left-hand side you've got your red symbol with the, the golden sun, but on the right-hand side of the banner there's a little icon with a green circle around it. The climate. Oh, yeah, have you spotted that? Because that's, that's new to Total War 2. All right. I saw that it was a thing. I didn't see what it did. Here it comes right. the Skeggy. Green means that this is an entirely suitable climate for your race. Um, so you can populate it and have no penalties. There are other um, locations, for example, in a mountain range for a lizard, mm -hmm. um, that they might not enjoy so much. They can so still get penalties to your it. happiness or growth or stuff like that. Yeah, exactly that. Yeah, because the way that Warhammer 1 did it is that Dwarves could not occupy human cities. They could occupy orc cities and dwarf cities. Mm. That's it. Right. That this is sense. a much more intelligent way to do it. Yeah. All right. I'm going to read out this event. Your Slon Mage Priest researches. <clears throat> sorry. Researches reveal the whereabouts of a distant but accessible plaque. A recording a ritual usable once, which will powerfully defend your greatest Sora Scar veteran against agents of the ancient enemy. Is it worth sending an expedition, especially to retrieve this one-off advantage? What is a Scar Veteran? Ah, uh, new to Total War II, no idea. I'm guessing a hero? Is it a Saurus hero? Who's, um, what's the commander of our second army, uh, Koamitor? Is he a Scar Veteran? Maybe. I don't know. Scar Veteran is a hero. I don't have one of those. I mean, I have the, the skink. I don't have a Saurus hero. So if I mount this expedition, my best Saurus hero would be no one. Mm. If you could see the webcam now, Sage, just imagine that I've got blank look. Like, I'm <laughs> giving you that. That makes two of us. You know what? Nah, let's not go to Camelot. Which is a silly place. <laughs> oh, right. right, our Aardvox our, our helped us out. Um, he, he is indeed a hero, not a, um, a an army leader. Um, and they are um, melee. Um, he, he likens them to captains of the Empire from the first game, who are very worth having. They become very good in combat. They're, they're like a great second-in-command in your army that mm -hmm. uh, exude leadership and they're terrific melee fighters. Or... Yeah, really not sure what to do with this Kamator guy. I need a plan for him. Immortal? Okay, that's... Well, I'd rather not need it, but okay. Right, so these are really, really epic level stuff. Let's not focus on those right now.
deadly onslaught. Did you um, notice in the building trees what you need to unlock the uh, scarred veteran um, Saurus heroes? Mm, I know that it was the level four Saurus building plus a weapon crafting building, I believe. Yeah, I, I, I'm particularly fond of the the, the big melee heroes. That they're, they're great for. I remember the, um, mm -hmm. the the beast men used to. You could have a minotaur hero, and oh, he was a beast. I'm, I'm guessing that the, the uh, scarred veteran is something along those lines. But you build him. You see that yellow the yellow tree that you've typically got that improves the that particular character's combat skills. If you invest heavily in that give him some tasty weapons and armor that you've picked up along the way that you don't want for your leader, he really becomes an absolute monster. Do we need to go and play Blood Bowl with Shawnee imminently? I believe we might need to do so, yes. When are, uh, when are, uh, are you resuming um, which streaming of this because this is awfully interesting. I to join you should you want to me. I expect to be doing so tomorrow morning ish. Um, I put it in my calendar with a question mark at ten. I might want to fix things so that this game is on the SSD though. So that might take me a little while because I have the SSD uh, in a. <clears throat> Uh, in an optical disc imitation format so that I could shove it into my laptop so I have to figure out if I even have room for it. So I might have to do some uh, some work with that. Ah, no problem. Well, look, I'll be around tomorrow anyway playing Total War because it's released in the morning, 8.30 <laughs> my time. So if uh, mm -hmm. if it becomes a thing, just buzz us a message. In yes, just, we'll do that. Uh, we'll right. So um, we're going to go on a quick break. That means uh, if you're watching this on YouTube, this video is now over and you'll get to watch the next one soon. If you're watching this on Twitch, you get to have some Blubble 2 highlights. Um, well, I'll take a break and then we're going to play against Shawnee. So, see you all in just a little bit. Goodbye, YouTube people, and uh, see you in a minute, um, Twitch people. All right, YouTube, thanks for watching. If you enjoyed this, remember to leave it a thumbs up at the bottom. And of course, if you'd like to see more videos, do check out the channel and hit subscribe on your top right.